Like they just leave the bodies there too. Like there's just up in like top of Everest, there's a guy curled up in the cave wearing green boots. No one knows his name, which is kind of weird. And they're like, that's just Green Boots Cave now. And like, my girlfriend was like, hey, maybe don't make a joke about Green Boots. And I'm like, well, in the guidebook, he's a trail marker, so what's worse? <laughs> Being a rock climber, though, you get like kind of like, my girlfriend, she'll ask me weird questions. Like, we'll be walking down the road and she'll see a brick wall. She'll be like, oh, can you climb that? I'm, like, I'm not fucking Spider Man, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Weird question. Like that's this is a stereotypical question. She'll ask it any time. Like I don't. I have friends that hunt. I'm not hanging out with them. And I'll point to an animal. And be like, hey, you could take out that service dog from here. It's <laughs> dumb. Like, you know, that's like, it's weird. Like even though I'm a comedian, I get the same stereotypical questions. Anything happens in my life whatsoever, everybody's like, oh, is that going to be part of your act now? Like, I don't know. Like everything's ass worthy funny. Not too long ago, I went downtown for dinner with friends. I passed out, hit my head, split it open, I had to take an ambulance to the hospital. That's not super funny, but I'll try. <laughs> one thing I know about passing out is when you pass out, there's like a couple ways to wake you up. Uh, smelling salts is one of them. Uh, they don't have those. Uh, other way is to just stroke someone's, if, you, if it's male, I guess, you, you rub their pecker. Uh, <laughs> And when I came to on the floor of that Mexican restaurant and my best friend Matt wasn't giving me a hand job, I was pretty pissed off. I was like, you mean my fake passing out for nothing? It was super LOL, right? Barrel laughs. And then you get like carted off on a stretcher out of a restaurant and there's people waiting for my table. <laughs> like, like, like the reservation's in 10 minutes, but fuck it, then we go now that asshole can't handle his hot sauce. <laughs> I walk, I, they wheel me up, put me in the ambulance, they drive me to the hospital, and then, like they're out there and they're like looking at my head and like, shit, your head is too messed up, we can't give you stitches, it's too big, we can see your thoughts, like that's not going to work. <laughs> so I think they, like, we have to give you staples. Now, I don't know if you've been to the hospital, but I had to get staples, but do you know who they have due to staples? Not their best guy. It's not even like the second bet. It's whoever is closest to the stapler at the time they need it. Like if my mom was there, they would have like been like, "Can you reach it?" She's like, "Yeah." I'm like, well, you're hired. And the guy they had for me, like he still had his janitor overalls on. And he was like, "All right." And, like he was like, "I knew I was fucked a little bit because like right before he started giving the staples in my head, I heard him under his breath go, "I can do this." <laughs> I was like, "Oh no." <laughs> I want to be like, hold oh, no. up, but then like the fucking legal heroin they gave me just kicked in and I was like, fucking, you got this. <laughs> and he just like, and I was like, oh, that was a practice one, wasn't it? He's like, yeah. <laughs> that was fun. But then like I got the staples out and eventually like it was really easy. We just tied fishing line around every single one and then tied one into a uh, ceiling fan and I just jumped off a chair. <laughs> and I just went <laughs> right out. It was cool. And I had to go to the doctor though, for a follow up. Doctor, he was like, he's like, oh man, your head's looking good. Uh, it looks like it's healing. You have any concerns? I'm like, ah, it itches a lot. He goes, yeah, your head is like a healing wound. It will itch, or it could be all that fucking lice you got. So I was like, nah, that's not lice. That's cramps. <laughs> no, my head, my head, it's, it's healing good now. But he did tell me, be careful. I started having like blurred vision or like dizziness, and I'm like, I think I've had that my whole life. So. John Cena, and I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure if that would work. But then my girlfriend, she was like super, she was there with me the whole time. She was like supportive, like held my hand when they were putting staples on my head, because it's like, it's scary. Uh, but she's like, and like, I owe it to her, you know, because like one time she woke me up, I was sleeping, and she goes, Carl, I got to go to urgent care. And I was like, all right, that's fun. She was like, no, I need you to drive me there. And I was like, shit, all right, Uber, too expensive? <laughs> I was like, no, I need you. I was like, fine, cool. So I got out of bed, quick as I could, and then just put on the closest clothing I could. We got in the car and we drove there. We get to urgent care. She's like, sweet, we have 20 minutes to my appointment. I said, what's the appointment shit? I thought it was urgent care. She's like, no, nah, I got an appointment. I was like, all right, so that's when I learned two things then. Uh, one, need appointment. And two, in my haste to get ready, I had accidentally put on all of her clothing. 
mainly her leggings, just walking through virgin care with juicy across my ass. <laughs> Super great. <laughs> I had to walk through virgin care looking like my favorite hobbies include hanging out at truck stops and opiates. <laughs> they out here for a checkup, I'm sure you are. <laughs> we got my girlfriend in the all checked out, like, alright, you're good, just go to the pharmacy, get some over counter meds, you'll be all set. I'm like, sweet, I'm dressed for Walmart, let's go there. My girlfriend, no, I have these bottle return soaps from Meyer, let's go there instead. Like, alright, fine. We go to Meyer and I'm walking through the pharmacy like I'm wearing last night's victim's clothing still. So I like the way you feel. And I go up to the counter and I text my girlfriend, like, hey, what do you need? She goes, I need Sudafed. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Because I don't think my Sudafed, it's really good for curing flu, cough, something like that. Way better for making that. And I was dressed like it was a hobby for sure. I go up to the counter and the guy looking at me goes, oh, you need Sudafed? <laughs> How'd you guess? He's like, I can tell. He's like, well, yeah, I do actually. He goes, all right, I got some questions for you. I go, yeah, that kind of makes sense. He goes, uh, how much do you need? Who is it for? And do you like Kid Rock? <laughs> I was like, well, you know, it's for my girlfriend. I uh, need the smallest box possible. Uh, and after cocky, just not the biggest fan. He goes, all right, you pass the test. And he goes, how are you going to pay for this? I go, oh, I got these bottle return slips. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, I don't know, you're, you're not getting sued if that's what you're getting shit. He goes, oh, go to Walmart, they can just give it out there. Like, All right. I was like, do you know where the bath salts are? He's like, get out of here. I was bad, I was sad though, because like the fair was in town, I wanted to sell some men. <laughs> the fair, like I went to the county fair over the summer. Like a county fair and a city fair are vastly different. City Fair, you go there and it's like on a, like a parking lot. Like it's all like, it's like kind of professional looking, I guess. Then you go to a county fair and it's like, where are your boots? Um, you're going to be stepping in a lot of animal shit and you're gonna, there's going to be a lot of men. A lot, a lot of it. And like, it's not exclusively there, but you can tell just by the empty, empty cans of paint thinner, the mason jars and all the rusty RVs. Even the rides have methy names. You're like, the, you want to go to Spin Dizzler? How about the Dragon Wagon? That sounds fun. My favorite, though, is the Ferris wheel laced with bath salts. That's the coolest one. I think uh, I should change it. I used to say Ferris wheel laced with fentanyl, but people don't like that one for some reason. Which I get, it, but we'll figure it out. We'll get a different one, and the next time I have a joke, you guys will be like, damn, Carl, that was way better. Like, we, we respect you now. Like, It'll be that warm hug I've always wanted. <laughs> Instead of up here just riffing like crazy, trying it, all right, I'm just looking, I'm just looking around. I'm trying to like, I was, ideally I wanted all my uh, punchlines to be words that are hard to pronounce so that I couldn't be part of the game at the end. Uh, <laughs> and that's when I said, photosynthesis. Uh, I don't know. Now I did uh, another big thing that happened to me recently. I, did, I got engaged uh, over the Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulate her, I'm a fucking catch, man. She, like, yeah, no, but she, she's all over to death. Like, it's cool. I still say girlfriend because, like, it's just fucking hard to say fiance. Like, that's, it fucks up flow. You know, you can't do it. But it was fun. Like, the way I proposed, I had a whole plan figured out. Like, I, we leave, like, a uh, love notes for each other on this dry erase board at home. Like, they don't see each other. Like, all day we'll leave and know. So I wrote my proposal speech on the board. Uh, and I hid it though, because when she got home from work, I wanted to make sure she was in a good mood, because if she was like being an asshole, I didn't want to like do it then. You know, like, not a good way. So she came home, she was in a good mood, and I was like, fuck yeah, this is gonna work. And she went in the living room and like upstairs, and I quick put the note out, and uh, I called up to her, I was like, hey, you forgot, that I, you didn't read the note I left. And then she comes walking downstairs, and that's when I realized she went upstairs to change. So she was no longer in her nice dress clothes that you would probably want to propose to in. No, now she's dressed in like her scrubbiest workout clothes. Because she was planning to go on the treadmill. She wearing just like leggings that I sully with my suit of it. And uh, her old high school like football sweatshirt. I'm like, shit, this sucks. But it was too late. She already started reading the note. I'm like, ah, oh, no, like, yeah, I was 
panicking, but I was like, we're fucking in it now. Like, this, we're going to see this through. And uh, she's like, she didn't even read the whole thing. She just skimmed to the bottom and then looked over at me. And I'm standing like a dumb fuck with my thumb up my ass, like holding a ring in one hand, and I'm just like panicked. I was like, marry me. <laughs> and she, first thing she said, is this a bit? I mean, it will be. <laughs> you know? She goes, I, and I was like, she goes, and then finally she goes, yeah, I will. Sweet. And she said yes, and then I got, got engaged, and then now and then, like, later that night, I got super drunk. Uh, don't do that. If, you, if you're going to marry somebody, don't, don't propose and they get hammered, because then they get sad, and then you have to take them out Friday night and propose again in Grand Haven on the pier. <laughs> Which I did. I was like, and like I understand. Like I was like, she was the, like, she was the Thursday like after I proposed the next day. She's like, I kind of thought it'd be special. I was like, yeah, I get it. No, like I agree though. Because so I was like, yeah, I was like, I didn't have a shirt on. So like, yeah, that probably would have been better. So like, we made it right. I took her out to Grand Haven. I got drunk again. And uh, <laughs> no, it was fun. I was like, and I made sure I did it on the pier too. So if she said no, I could just fucking. <laughs> Believe it or not, she doesn't want to have a wedding, so fuck yeah, that's awesome. She doesn't want to have, she just is like, we're going to elope. We're going to go to Vegas, get married by Elvis, or Mackinac Island, have some fucking dickhead in a French Revolutionary War suit do it. Uh, but we're just not going to, we're going to like, save so much money. We're not going to have to hire photographers. Like, that's not like, I don't know what wedding photographs are for, besides, like, once you get them, you go, oh, look that fucking nice, and then when you die, they post them. Like, that's... Or if you're in a true crime documentary, they're like, oh, look how happy they were before they murder suicide each other. Like, not that that's gonna happen, but like, she does get mad. Um, not at me, just that. No, I was, no. Sometimes I'm like, I'm gonna do some riffing about my girlfriend, and then I remember, oh no, people talk to her. And, uh, like, I was gonna call her racist. But, <laughs> She did, this is fun, uh, to me. My girl was like, she's, got, she's a sweetheart, like, she's, she's the greatest in the world. She, she doesn't have a bad bone in her body. Uh, but one time, she's like, everybody has, like, you know, racist thoughts. And I was like, I don't think so. Uh, I go, what do you mean? She's like, well, like, if I see someone driving bad, I'm like, oh, that's, a, that's a Asian. And I'm like, that's so dumb. Like, my girlfriend's like, well, what's the matter with you? And I was like, I never, whenever I see a person driving bad, I'm like, oh, that's girlfriend. <laughs> Try to say it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do one more guy. You guys have been so fucking fun. This has been a lot of fun. Show. First show of 2012. Alright. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, let's see. I, uh, so I'm donating blood tomorrow. I finally can do that. I've been trying to donate blood for a while. And one time I went to donate blood like earlier uh, last year. And I went to donate. They, uh, before they checked draw your blood, they check your blood pressure. And you check mine, and the guy goes, oh boy, your blood pressure is way too high to donate. And I was like, I have an idea. Take some out. <laughs> like, I'm not a doctor, but like, I've worked at Bell Tire. <laughs> Thank you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. My name's Carl Simmons. Let's give it by everybody.
Her mom tried to get mad at me and say that I helped her cheat for the grave, but I was confused. I said, wait a minute, cheating? Isn't that how she got here? Cheating? And then I ran to the door, but you know, I'm big, so it's more of a desperate walk. I want to give a shout out to, you know, all the blue collar workers out there, you know. I'm a, I don't know trucks at Home Depot, so I'm a orange collar worker. But working at Home Depot is kind of like working in Mexico. Because the management is terrible. Everybody who comes in as soon as you can speak Spanish, and they pay me in pesos. <laughs> now, I know some of you are thinking, like, wait, they pay in pesos at Home Depot? No, El Stupido. They pay so terrible. They pay so terrible, I can't afford condoms or child support, so I have to take care of my kid. <laughs> and I know some of you, you know, out there probably think that I have multiple baby mamas and multiple child support payments, but I don't. One kid, one baby mama. That's how you know I'm not fully black. <laughs> but kids are kind of like a blessing, though, if you don't know what a blessing is. Because they're more like a gift than a curse especially three-year-olds, because they will say whatever comes to their mind with no rumors. I know every kid does it, but my daughter does it at the worst times. So the other day I'm at the store getting, you know, household staples, chicken, grits, watermelon, regular stuff, everybody gets it. So as I'm grabbing the pig, the pig feet, I nudge my daughter, boom. She turns to me like the Terminator and says, you just hit me, that's not okay. So I said, I'm sorry, baby girl, it was an accident. No, no, it's not okay. At this point, I could feel the whole entire store staring at me. So I look over my shoulder, and sure enough, everybody is looking directly at me. I even heard someone say, he hit that little girl like he was Ike Turner. <laughs> now, I'm too big and too black to beat the Ike Turner allegations. Being biracial won't help me here. So I just cut my losses and had to self check out. Well, y'all know by now, it was more of a desperate war. Thank you, everybody. My name is Michael. Yeah, that does 
check out. I guess that makes sense. I don't know why I couldn't have put that together. I guess it's because I was homeschooled. <laughs> good times, good times. My brother and I were pretty close. One day we decided it would be a good idea to take an edible before going to dinner with our parents. So we took the edible, we sat down to dinner, and midway through dinner, he looks over at me with the highest look I've seen. He's sitting there and just looks over at I don't know if you guys know this, but when you're high, sometimes you get paranoid and do some weird shit. My brother looks over at me, and he gets distracted halfway through trying to talk to me. He's like, besides this weekend, Pairs automatic. 